today we have some real heavyweights in the nasal department which fortunately or unfortunately depending on how much you like your cheese YouTube hasn't figured out a way of doing that yet um, but um, yeah it's quite ripe here at the moment we have Saint Vernier we have Saint Marcelin we have La Retorta and we have the amazing Vacheron. Um, four incredible cheeses, um, quite a few similarities with them, quite a few differences as well. So let's dive in. First up, we have Saint Vernier. Uh, it's a French cheese um, made with pasteurized cow's milk. And um, this, personally, I feel is one of the things that French, along with other cheesemakers, but I particularly like that the French do these things. It's washed regularly in wine. How awesome is that? That is absolutely awesome. So as you can see, there's a, a, a bloom on the outside of it. Yeah. It's usually packaged in this little um, uh, wooden flower here. Um, it's made from the milk of um, Montbelliard sheep which several of these uh, are also made with the same milk, which is a very interesting fact. Yeah. Of our cheeses here, uh, you may see in some cheeses they have a strength rating on. This is rated as a three. So it is a bit pokey, but it's also got some mildness to it as well. So let's dive in. You see, I've got spoons here today because a lot of these, the idea is you kind of open the top and you eat the gooey center. So, but um, I do want to smell the rind and see what we get. Oh, that's really quite beautiful. There's really something of the animal left in there. I've, I've said this before with cheeses, but some cheeses become kind of a separate product on their own, but some you can really tell that the cheese has come from milk, which has come from an animal. With this one, there's definitely something of that sweaty cow kind of scent going on. So I'm just gonna use the spoon here to pop open the top. It's, it's weird because it's quite pliable, but at the same time, the rind looks reasonably firm. Let's just open that up. Okay, so inside, inside looks soft, creamy, doesn't look too gooey. Um, there are cheeses that are essentially liquid inside. So let's give this a little try. Looks very lovely. Now that's completely different. The inside of the cheese and the rind have an extremely different scent. I'm getting much more of that wine, ah, kind of floral fruitiness to it. And a freshness as well. Let's give it a try. Mmm, mmm. Wow, that's such a succession of flavors. I'm gonna do that again and see if I can describe it to you as I'm doing it. So, first of all, the nose is much fresher than the rind. Um, there's a freshness when it starts to build and the flavor develops really quite quickly. It's now much stronger and it almost reminds me, almost of the, um, the Morbier that we had in the other video. It almost reminds me of the center of that Morbier with a kind of 
almost like yeast extract kind of flavor going on. Mmm, that is absolutely gorgeous. That will be lovely, I think. You can just eat that on its own. You could put it on something, you could dip it, you could bake it, do all kinds of things with that, I think. I realize that you may not be too keen to try the washed rind cheeses with the that incredibly strong smell some of them have, but this one is much more um, polite, shall we say. Um, it's, it's not too offensive at all. Um, lovely flavor. You could dip something in that, you could melt it on something. I think that would be a really good intro as well as being a beautiful cheese in its own right. Okay, moving on. Uh, you may notice this comes in a little pottery dish, a little earthenware dish here, which happens to match this little earthenware dish um, because I have eaten this one before. I'm just gonna have an almond actually to try and cleanse my palate a little before I move on to the next cheese. Mm. This is Saint Marcelin. It's uh, from the Rhône-Alpes region of France. Um, it's uh, made from raw cow's milk. It's also from the Montbelliard cows. Uh, and this one has a protected designation of origin. So let's do um, a similar thing. Let me give this a little sniff up close. Oh, now that's much fresher, surprisingly. This is this is on the, the strength rating. It's rated as a four, but the nose is a lot friendlier, I think, than this one. Mm, it's beautiful. It's got that freshness to it. There's a real freshness as well as these kind of lovely heady notes as well. So let's crack on, and open this one up. Much, much, much softer rind here. I'm just gonna pop the rind off because they are so strong. I don't know if you can see in there, this is much gooier, much, much gooier in places. Still holds its shape together okay. It's not quite liquid, but it's definitely got some, uh, a bit of runniness going on. And it smells really, really fresh. Right, let's give it a taste. Mmm, wow, immediately. Takes no prisoners, it comes in at full strength, straight away, boom. But it doesn't get stronger. Some of the cheeses, as, uh, as they rest in your mouth and they develop, the aromatics start to come out and they start to get stronger and different flavors. It's going from sort of heady, moldy, um, washed rind, notes, um, much more like that yeast extract kind of saltiness and strength. And it's mellowing right out, but it's still a really good, strong flavor. I'm getting much more flavor of cream and um, sort of yogurty freshness about it, rather than, uh, rather than it becoming stronger and stronger and richer and headier and I pass out. So, that's an excellent cheese. I really, really like that one. Very, very lovely. Moving on from France to Spain. This is the beautiful La Retorta. Now, if you check out up here, I've done a video with La Retorta before. Um, the reason being that it is a raw milk, sheep's milk, sheep's cheese, um, made in Spain. Um, this lovely looking cheese. This one looks slightly different to my last one, but it does still have that. It looks a little bit like a bruise, if you can see here. And the nose on it is, in oh, it's incredible. This is probably the strongest one for the nose here. Maybe, yeah, we'll see. But again, it's complex as well because there's so much care taken. And of course, these cheeses are really old um, recipes as well. Um, 
Oh. That's absolutely gorgeous. You can taste, there's like a, a nose of sort of hay and definitely a sheepiness to it. You can definitely smell the sheep. Um, last time I tried it with the rind, which is apparently quite brave. <laughs> um, and um, yes, the way to do it is to cut the top off, which actually I can just do it with a spoon. I'll pop the top off with a spoon like I did with the others. Much stronger crust on this one, much, much stronger. Inside, we have this beautiful looking goo. I don't know if you can see, the color of it doesn't quite match the cow's milk cheeses. There's a difference in the color. Um, some of that's to do with, um, I believe sheep's milk does not have any beta carotene in it. So it's a slightly different luster to it. Um, out of its um, stinky enclosure, the the Lara Torta is much fresher. It's still a strong cheese, but it has a freshness. It loses the um, the kind of um, the mouldiness that you get from the rind. Doesn't carry on into the cheese. <sighs> Beautiful nose on it. Let's give it a try. Mm. Again, it's a, mm. Mm. It's another cheese that takes no prisoners. As soon as you put it in your mouth, it's like, bang. Everything dialed up to 11. Absolutely exquisite. I'm always in, amazed when they're able to make something so potent from something that's quite gentle in a way, like sheep's milk. So the initial strength and richness is dying back and it's mellowing, it's changed a lot and there's a lot more, some more animal-y notes to it. So I'm getting slightly butteriness to it now. Um, not really a creaminess, I wouldn't say. There's nothing really particularly creamy about it. It's more like, um, if you were to eat something like liver and onions, and even with the onions and the liver, you're still able to kind of taste the butter that you pan fried it in. So, absolutely beautiful. Far more palatable without the rind. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely the way to do it. Um, I think this would also be rather lovely if you kind of, if you baked it, I think. That'd be rather super. Um, so this was a strength three, but this one is a four. This one is listed as strength six. Uh, and now we have another cheese listed as strength six. I'm just gonna have an almond before I dive in. This is the amazing Vacheron. There's so much to say about Vacheron. I believe it's been made since the 13th century. Uh, it is made from raw cow's milk. Um, from a very specific region. It's made between some very specific dates, August the 15th to March the 15th. It's the only time it can be made and it can only be sold from September the 10th to May the 10th. This is a winter cheese and it is particularly produced like this when there is not enough milk to make Comte. Um, Comte is one of my favorite Alpine cheeses. It's just such a go-to cheese. It's so good for everything. Salads or, you know, you can grate it on things, you can cook with it, you can eat it as it is. It's what, oh, it's magnificent cheese. You can make a fondue with it, anything you like. Um, the, the Vacheron is made with the milk when the cows are producing less milk. They're out in beautiful Alpine meadow and everything and they're only fed grass or hay. Um, no supplementation allowed. So you'll notice it's in a, a little box, which you sometimes see other round yeast cheeses in. This is very specifically made of spruce. 
and the vachelon is actually produced inside this piece of spruce so it's it's made on uh, spruce shelves and then the bloom that's on the top here is only on the top because it's not like the, the cheese isn't sort of made and put in here it's kind of produced in here so it's a bit of a different process so as such there is a a rind on the top but there's no rind around the edge the spruce itself imparts a lot of its uh, kind of piney alpine scents and floral notes and stuff into the cheese um, this is a really good cheese to eat as it is or you can eat it you can bake it um, I've even seen a thing where you um, uh, put it in a dish leave it in here put it, a dish around it put some wine in there and then wrap the whole thing in foil and put that in the, put it in the uh, oven that sounds really good but I've not tried it need to try that um, you might notice around the edge of here there's some mold and then so around the edge there's some black mold going on that doesn't mean that there's a problem with the cheese in fact that's a really good sign some cheeses um, have a kind of a symbiosis if you like with their production process um, materials and this one in particular as it's got such an affinity with the spruce is it, it develops this black um, edge at times that is directly to do with the, the spruce um, I think the best thing to do is to dive in and try it now they do say that the rind is not edible on here um, this one's unpasteurized this one's unpasteurized this one's unpasteurized and this one is pasteurized just a note here if you are pregnant or breastfeeding or you're a very young person or a very old person or you have some sort of condition where your immune system may be compromised you need to steer clear of products made with unpasteurized milk um, most healthy adults should be there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever with uh, eating this kind of food but if there's um uh if you have a particular reason such as pregnancy or you're an infant or even a young child um you need to steer clear of these unpasteurized cheeses so let's move on let's dive in and give this a try shall we so i'm gonna see if I can get through this oh wow look at that I'll try and pop the top off there ah oh. now if you recall the other <laughs> the other cheeses we need a little helping hand here the other cheeses were nice and soft inside no problem to scoop them out with a spoon this, however, is a different story. Look at that. That is actually running off my spoon very slowly and is almost entirely liquid. I don't think you could really describe that as a solid. Right, here we go. Mm, it's actually really quite fresh. The uh, nose of the rind is really strong. But this, the beautiful gooey inside, which I'm going to have to eat fairly quickly, it's lovely. You can get a slight hint of woodiness to it. Let's try with a try. Mmm, absolutely exquisite. There's so much forest going on in there. You can really, uh, that spruce really comes through into the cheese. Mmm, it's super creamy and delicious. There are so many flavors going on. Mmm, I need to try that again. It's gonna get on the spoon. Right, let's give this a try. 
I would normally obviously not touch the knife to my mouth so it's no problem to cut another piece but with these they're so gooey it's it's like pudding so I don't want to put my used spoon back in as I've got someone else going to be trying this later Hmm. Hmm. Salty and creamy. Almost a hint of cauliflower going on. Cabbaginess, which I guess is coming from the, the rind. Hmm. And then a lovely warmth, like, um, Almost like a roasted kind of flavour. Mmm. And then the whole thing starts to mellow and tastes a lot more, a lot more dairy. There's a lot more dairy going on. And then and then just at the end, I'm getting the leftover remnant of the um, of the animal, if you like, so the the kind of the cow coming through. Mm, that's absolutely exquisite. We're going to be chopping the top off that and sharing it, which is yeah, that's going to be fantastic. So I urge you to give these a try. These are um, uh, we've got the the washed rind and we've got the um, the Vacheron, they're not really similar. They look kind of similar, but they're, they're different ways of producing something from a similar region. We've got three of them have the same milk, one of them pasteurized, two of them not. But these two cheeses couldn't be more different. Um, and the La Retorta produced in a similar way to the uh, Saint Marcelin, but um, you know, again, totally different cheese, but again, it's, it's with different milk, so. Um, I'm always stunned by how much variety they can get just essentially from methods. So this is essentially we, we only we only really make cheese from cows, sheep or goats. Um, so that's three kinds of cheese and then just subtle differences like oh well these cows are above a certain altitude and they're only fed natural forage. Um, we don't pasteurize the milk and then we use local materials. Um, in fact, this one also, if you use local materials, um, the wine is from um, uh, locally produced uh, and that's what's used to, to wash the cheese. Um, beautiful cheese. All these cheeses are absolutely superb. However, if you do have a, someone in the house who's not particularly a fan of cheese, there may be issues with the smell. And normally I wouldn't recommend kind of wrapping cheese in plastic. I like to use greaseproof paper um, to wrap my cheese. You can buy proper sheets of paper specifically for wrapping cheese, which is waxed on one side, but not any kind of waxed baking paper would be all right if you wrap them well. Um, but these I am actually gonna put individually into Tupperware and back in the fridge to try at least to calm them down. Um, I don't know if you recall, there was another video just up here where I tried the um, uh, uh, Putty Munster. I tried Putty Munster, which was a gift from someone, and it was so strong. It was in the fridge. We have a fridge freezer, and you could smell it when you opened the freezer. So it was actually penetrating from the fridge to the freezer. That's that's a seriously strong cheese. Uh, and this was wrapped as well. So <laughs> wrapped and in Tupperware. If you've tried these cheeses before uh, and you particularly like or dislike them or you have some comments to it, maybe you come from the region in Spain where the La Retorta is produced um, and you eat it a particular way, let me know in the comments down below.
Please like, share, comment and subscribe and hit the bell.